DIY Geophone, Seismograph, a practical use for automated macro stacking photography. Objective is to implement the device with an automated stacking system. The slightest vibration from traffic or footsteps can ruin a photo stack. When the device is triggered this will tell the stacking routine to pause and not take any photos. Design the device using a 3D software of your liking. A small cylindrical magnet is held in the middle of the container. This is show here in blue. Here you can see the parts of the device. Top and bottom covers are printed in PLA plastic using a 3D printer. Bobbin is machined out of Delrin but can also be printed. The magnet is glued with epoxy to one of the end caps. Bobbin is wound with thin insulated copper wire and then terminated to the outside of the container. The bobbin has a center bore slightly larger than the diameter of the magnet. The elastic bands hold the bobbin in place and tension is finely adjusted so that magnet won't touch the inside of the bobbin. Quick test using an oscilloscope to check if we can detect any vibration. Yes we can detect a signal of a few millivolts. So far so good. Now that the device is ready we need to build an electronic circuit that will amplify the tiny signal coming from the coil when sensing the slightest vibration. As you can see in the schematic we will be using two low noise op amps as amplifiers one feeding the other for maximum amplification. By simulating the circuit we can see that we can amplify a 10 mV peak-to-peak -peak signal to a maximum of 3.3 V peak-to-peak signal using these op amps. In this circuit we are also using a MAX931 comparator that we can set using the potentiometer a digital signal out based on the amplitude of signal required for triggering. We will not be using this digital out from the comparator as after some experimentation we found out that it would be much more flexible to just process the analog amplified signal using a microcontroller later on. In this manner we will have many options on what criteria is needed to make a trigger. After the schematic design is finished, the file is then transferred to a board layout software that will automatically route all the connections as per the schematic. The top and bottom layouts are printed on transparencies. Then using ultraviolet light and a photosensitive PCB board, the track's information is transferred to the PCB. The PCB is then etched using caustic soda and ferric chloride acid. Here is the finished PCB.
It did not come up that great as the chemicals I used were very old, but I managed to fix the problems using a Dremel tool. These are the low noise op amps used. It is important that the op amps are low noise, as the source signal is very small. And this is the comparator used. You can find the full schematic in the description. And now you can see the PCB being assembled. All components are soldered carefully to the PCB, starting with the small ones first. Let's speed this up. Ops and comparator are now soldered. All resistors are now soldered. All capacitors are now soldered. And here is the finished PCB. Connect Geophone to the signal input of circuit and using an oscilloscope check what is on the analog and digital output of the circuit. Circuit works, analog signal can be amplified to around 3.3 volts by adjusting the gain potentiometer. Digital output also works and can be adjusted for the desired triggering level using potentiometer, but we will only use the analog output. We will be using an ESP32 as microcontroller. LED gives an indication of triggering. PCB is fixed to the geophone, and mounted under the table where macro equipment are to be placed. For testing purposes I am also monitoring the input signal to the microcontroller. The bottom green signal is the signal received by the microcontroller. A program using C++ was developed so that the microcontroller can do some calculation on the amplitude of the signal, and in turn determines if a triggering signal is needed to be sent to the main controller, that operates the macro rig. If the main controller receives a triggering signal, then it pauses from taking any photos. This will prevent any blurred photos. Let's have a look at the program. Here we can set a value that determines triggering. Lower means more sensitive.
and here is to be set the time pause before rechecking the input. The program read signal, shown here as waveform on serial port, calculates maximum peaks at time intervals, red line, calculates minimum dips at time intervals, blue line, then finally calculates the difference. If this difference is greater than the predefined value, then it sends a triggering signal to the main controller that operates the macro rig. You can see how sensitive this device is. Just by slightly tapping on the display screen or touching something on the table, signal magnitude is largely increased and tiggering is executed. We will be shooting a quick stack to prove the concept. Here we are looking at a baby weevil which is about 2 millimeters. The lens being used is a 10x Mitatoyo objective. By looking at the monitor screen and zooming in on the eye of the creature we can clearly see that even the smallest vibrations can make the picture shake. This will result in blurry images that can ruin a stack. The problem becomes more evident when using higher exposure time settings on the camera. Now let's have a look at the macro rig doing a photo stack with this device implemented. If I just touch the table or a car passes by and causes the slightest vibration, the system stops taking any photos and resumes once the vibration subsides. The system is set to take 112 photos automatically, moving 7 micrometers after each photo. As you can see, just by light tapping anywhere on the table, the system pauses from taking any photos.
The concept works. For the extreme macro enthusiast out there, I encourage you to implement such a device in your systems, as it is simple to build and a very cost-effective way to improve your results. I hope you found this video helpful. Please feel free to download the schematic and device CAD design from the description. Thanks.